Okay, so we've got to talk about this story in the New York Times that I think is just bonkers because essentially what it's about is this rivalry between Neera Tanden and Bernie Sanders' campaign. But what they reveal about Neera Tanden, these are very explosive details that blew my mind. So the title is The Rematch, Bernie Sanders versus a Clinton Loyalist. And this was written by Elizabeth Williamson and Kenneth Vogel. Now, the first revelation that I learned about Neera Tanden is that she literally physically assaulted Bernie Sanders' campaign manager once. Literally. And she admitted that she physically assaulted him. So here's what they say about that. In 2008, Neera Tanden, then a top aide on Hillary Clinton's first presidential campaign, accompanied Miss Clinton to what was expected to be an easy interview at the Center for American Progress, the influential group founded by top Clinton aides. But Faiz Shakir, the chief editor of the think tank's Think Progress website, asked Mrs. Clinton a question about the Iraq war, an issue dogging her candidacy because she had supported it. Miss Tandon responded by circling back to Mr. Shakir after the interview and, according to a person in the room, punching him in the chest. Quote, I didn't slug him, I pushed him, a still angry Miss Tandon corrected in a recent interview. What? So let's just be extra charitable to Neera Tandon, even though she'd never do this to us, but let's just, for argument's sake, let's say she only pushed him. You have absolutely no right to put your hands on anyone. You are not entitled to physically assault someone because they did something that you don't like. I mean, the Democratic Party itself screams about journalists. You all screamed the loudest, and I think rightfully so, when a journalist was body slammed by a Republican, but you pushed a journalist? This is incredibly bizarre, but the story itself gets weirder, weirder because for whatever reason, the New York Times journalists who penned this piece thought it was a good idea to bring in near attendance mom, and her mom kind of does her dirty here and kind of exposes her. So... <laughs> <laughs> this is what they say about Neera Tandon's mom. Still, Miss Tandon's mother, Maya Tandon, says that her daughter, quote, can be very aggressive. She's not going to let anyone rule over her, she said, and she has loyalty to Hillary because Hillary is the one who made her. Those Bernie brothers are attacking her all the time, but she lets them have it too, Maya Tandon said. She says Sanders got a pass in 2016, but he's not getting a pass this time. So I resent being called a Bernie brother, Miss Tandon, because we are now known as Bernard brothers. We're more sophisticated. We're older now. We're more mature. We're more strategically savvy, politically astute. We're now Bernard brothers. So don't call us Bernie bros anymore. Now, with that being said, um, this doesn't make it okay. Oh, well, she has a temper. It's not an excuse. And I, I don't know if her mom is trying to do pro Nira apologia, but I mean, how is this acceptable? I hate to use this argument, but if a Republican did it, Democrats would be screeching about this from the rooftops. But because Nira Tandon did it, it's okay. She still can go on to lead the Center for American Progress, maybe the leading Democratic establishment think tank. It's weird. This is such a weird story. Now, this article goes on to talk about donors that the Center for American Progress has and how those donors are essentially the same donors as the Clinton Foundation. And additionally, Nira's mom chimes in again and <laughs> kind of does her dirty again. So they write, its donor roles overlap substantially with those of the Clinton's campaigns and foundation. The think tank has taken in millions from interests often criticized by liberals, including Wall Street financiers, big banks, Silicon Valley titans, foreign governments, defense contractors, and the healthcare industry. Individual donors can ask to remain anonymous. Quote, that's what she does. She shows up at rich people's places because she needs funds from them, Miss Tandon's mother said. That place runs on Neera Tandon. Wow. Wow. That's all I'll say. Wow. Now, 
what they go on to explain is the way that Neera Tandon isn't just taking money from individuals and industries that she shouldn't be taking money from. If she truly wants to be progressive, if you are the head of an organization that has progressive in its name, but nonetheless, it's not just that she's taking money from people who could potentially influence her and how she runs that organization, but there's an explicit example about what she did to court someone to the Center for American Progress, to recruit someone to the board, and it involves the legitimization of someone like Benjamin Netanyahu, who is a literal war criminal, who is overseeing modern-day apartheid. Proudly so. So, they write, in November 2015, after Ms. Tandon invited Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel to a question-and-answer session at the center, a dozen staff members stood during an all-staff meeting and read a statement of protest. Quote, our goal is to promote humanity and shut down oppression and genocide and terrorism. Bringing in another head of state with a record of oppression would further push our mission away, it read in part. In an email Ms. Tandon sent on the day of the Netanyahu visit, stolen and released by WikiLeaks, she told the think tank's founder, John D. Podesta, that the far left hates me for hosting Mr. Netanyahu, but the invitation may have sealed the deal with a new board member. Ms. Tandon was wooing Mr. Levine a pro-Israel philanthropist. The next month, Ms. Tandon wrote a jubilant email to Mr. Podesta telling him Mr. Levine was joining the board. So Netanyahu was worth it, she added with a smiley face emoji. Mr. Levine no longer sits on the center's board, but his foundation remains a big donor. The Netanyahu event was arranged with the public and private support of the Obama administration, and the notion that it was done at the behest of any donor is preposterous, a center spokeswoman said. Except that not preposterous because there are emails that you don't say are fake like these are authentic emails that wikileaks released and regardless of how they got it it proved that she explicitly did it at the behest of a donor so to say that that notion is preposterous no to say that that's preposterous is preposterous she literally brought on a war criminal to do a q a i'm guessing a softball q a all to court Mr. Levine. And it worked. And she was jubilant about that. Unbelievable. One last thing I want to read to you. Quote, Miss Tandon acknowledged tensions with what she called <laughs> millennial agitators in her party, but blamed Mr. Trump, who made, quote, crazy radical ideas seem more normal, she said in the interview. So I'm assuming I'm one of the so-called millennial agitators since Neera Tandon actually has me blocked on Twitter. And furthermore, crazy ideas that we have, quote unquote, crazy ideas that we're proposing, they're not just the left equivalent of what Donald Trump is proposing. What we're proposing, these aren't radical concepts. When you look at public opinion polls for policies like Medicare for All, free college, a Green New Deal, a federal jobs guarantee, regulating Wall Street, getting money out of politics, they're overwhelmingly popular. So just because they're not policies that are adopted by the status quo in DC doesn't mean that they're radical. If they're supported by most Americans, then by definition, these are the mainstream ideas. We're taking populist policy positions. But, you know, she doesn't like the millennial agitators. Well, maybe stop being so corrupt. Maybe stop fighting against us by lying and smearing to defend the status quo. Maybe try doing something that you haven't tried before, Nira. Maybe try making a good faith policy-based argument in favor of whatever candidate that you support. Now, they'll say, I don't support a candidate, but there's a different article in the New York Times that details how you met with Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and Pete Buttigieg to talk about what to do about Bernie Sanders. So even if you claim you don't have a favorite, even if you claim you don't have someone who you dislike, I mean, you're basically at this point pissing on our legs and you're trying to convince us it's raining. Not gonna happen. We know what you're all about. So in this article, they also talk about how, um, according to Judd Legum, who I believe is the new editor of Think Progress, he claims how Center for American Progress as a think tank no longer has legitimacy among the left, or it has diminished legitimacy or a legitimacy crisis, something along those lines, I'm paraphrasing, because of all of these things. 
Yeah, I don't view the Center for American Progress as an ally, and you'd think that I would because I'm a progressive, and this organization is ostensibly progressive because it has the word progress in the name, but in actuality, this is a right-wing organization, and there are some policy positions it takes that are far-right. You hosted a Q&A with Benjamin Netanyahu at the behest of a donor, and then you told us that that's not what you did. Unreal. But overall, just kind of stepping back, Nira Tandon punched someone. She is overtly corrupt. She does things. She goes out of her way to do things to lure donors. And um, she denies what she does out in the open. Unbelievable. It's not um, that surprising, but I'll be honest, I was a little bit shocked by the revelation that she physically assaulted Bernie's now campaign manager, Faisha Shakir. I don't know how she has any cre credibility in D.C. whatsoever. I don't know how she has a job. Um, again, if a Republican did that, they would rightfully be universally condemned, especially by Democrats. But because it's near its hand in, everybody loves her. Uh, Keith Ellison will hold her hand and talk about how much of a fierce progressive she is. And Democrats will rely on her for, you know, the creation of public policy when she basically is doing everything she can to undermine progressives. We propose Medicare for all. She proposes a watered down half measure. She's horrible. It seems like she's not just a politically bad person, but in general, personally, this article tells me that she is a bad person just in general, which um, is sad because I try to disaggregate the politics from the personality, but it seems like Neera Tandon really is how she presents herself to us. She's kind of a shitty person. You could support The Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast. Sad. <laughs>